Oh, all right, so this is a, a, gonna be a quick video. I'm gonna cover the uh, PowerPoint for my micro course for section three called Tools of the Lab. <clears throat> uh, now this is how you, uh, if you say you, a doctor decides that uh, you have an infection, they wanna know well, what's causing it, right? What's the bacteria that's causing a urinary tract infection or a wound infection? Maybe there's a you know, sinus infection that might swab your, your sinus. And so they would collect the, the sample first, right? Depending on what they, you know, where they're looking for it. And then you would take it to the lab and the lab would culture you know the sample put it on a say a plate media so the media is in a you know a food source for the bacteria so that you want them to grow right you need a lot of them you know say to be able to identify them and, and then the other thing you want to do is maybe if there's more than one bacteria there you know to separate them so that you can find the cause of the infection. Right, so you would inoculate media and then you would allow the bacteria to grow, right? Most of medically relevant bacteria grow at 37 degrees. So you'd put them in an incubator at that temperature. Right, you would want to purify, obtain a pure culture. You know, a sample very rarely that you get from a patient contains only one bacteria. Right, there's going to be normal flora in there, so it's contaminated. You want to pick out, obtain a pure culture of just the bacteria, and then you would test the bacteria. Right, you'd use different biochemical tests or maybe stains, and that's what we do in the lab. Right, in the lab, you'll be using like 14 different biochemical tests, and there's five different stain procedures. Right? And those are there to help you identify a bacteria unknown, right? That's kind of the purpose of, say, doing a culture and sensitivity CNS is so that the doctor can determine by using a lab, you know, what's causing your infection. The sensitivity part means, you know, you want to know, are they resistant or sensitive to antibiotics? It's, you know, like they don't want to give you an antibiotic that the bacteria is resistant to so the sensitivity would help the doctor decide whether that's the case or not then a streak plate is referred to or what we call we 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 you know this little line on the surface of this petri dish is where you've taken a loop or uh, some sort of device to transfer the bacteria that say on, a, on, on something else and then streak out this plate and each colony that's generated on the plate, you, you inoculate it and then that one bacteria that you left on the streak grows into a colony, right? One bacteria becomes one pure culture. You consider the bacteria that's growing in that colony to be from one type of bacteria. So they, uh, here's an example. Uh, they've taken an inoculating loop and spread out the bacteria and they left bacteria and they struck here. And you didn't see the bacteria when you were streaking them. You know, you don't see them until you allow the one bacteria to grow into these colonies. Okay, so that one bacteria generate this colony, one bacteria generate that colony, but you can see, right, if the, the bacteria were so close together, then one colony, they grow together. So the streak plate is used, right, to isolate colonies, spread them out enough so that you can purify right this is a, a you know streak one 
then streak two, streak three, streak four. And then there's another picture, right? You get these aren't distinct colonies here. There's too many bacteria. But when you get out to this streak, then hopefully you have a colony which you consider a pure culture at that point, right? A mixed culture contains more than one, and a pure culture only contains one. It's really difficult to identify the cause of an infection if the, what you're using to determine it contains more than one bacteria. Actually, it's impossible, right? It has to be just one bacteria can be identified at a time. It's another way of thinking of it. So this is a culture tube containing media or broth. Liquid is considered a broth. Agar media contains agar, right? So if I, if I added agar to the liquid media, then it turns into solid media. Agar is considered a solidifying agent. You can have liquid media, there's semi-solid media, and then there's what are, what's considered solid media as well. Right? If it's semi-solid, then there's not enough agar in it to make it solid. So it's sort of in between liquid and solid. But it, you add it, just kind of, a similar thing happens when you add gelatin to make uh, when you want to make gelatin, you add gelatin to water, you boil it up and you dissolve the gelatin in the water and it solidifies the water. Agar does the same thing to liquid broth. The broth needs to contain nutrients or the media needs to contain nutrients that the bacteria can grow, right? That's the whole purpose of having media, right? We just, all solid media in, you know, in the microbiology terms, it could be a slant in this case, right? And this slant, if this was the tube, then there's auger here, and then there's this slant that these bacteria are growing on. Like they took, they started at the bottom and they just drug their loop up the surface of the slant and left the bacteria, and the bacteria are now growing on the slant, on the surface. I try to draw it like this to see it at kind of an angle. You're kind of looking straight down on it. And then semi-solid media is a media that uh, is in between liquid, broth, and solid media. There's not enough auger in it. But when you stab the media, like here's one that's not been stabbed. They took a needle and they stuck it containing bacteria and they stuck it in and they stopped right here. And then they let the media incubate so the bacteria grow. Before they, they grew, you probably really didn't see any bacteria here, right? It takes time. But they stayed where the bacteria stayed right where they were placed, right? In the, in the stab. So those bacteria weren't able to swim, or they weren't modal. They did the same thing here, but you don't see that, right? This whole, it's a little bit foggier than this one, but there's also tons of bacteria growing on the surface. They were able to, right? they didn't do that on this one because they couldn't swim away. They kind of even just like swimming up the sides of the media, of the, of the glass. So these guys, because they were modal, they have a flagella, right? They appear like this when they grow in this bacteria that you stab uh, that can't, that aren't modal, they would appear this way in that media after you stabbed it and let it incubate. This one's black because it's just like this one, but they produced a biochemical. And this media is used to detect it by when it turns black then you know that those bacteria that were incubated in that media produce hydrogen sulfide. Some bacteria do, some bacteria do rather produce hydrogen sulfide, some bacteria don't. All right, so you want to identify bacteria, you can use biochemical tests or their ability to be motile to help 
you determine what bacteria is your unknown bacteria. So in the lab, you'll have three, there's usually three labs where you uh, determine an unknown bacteria. So mixed culture, this plate contains two bacteria. When they struck it out on the loop, there were two different bacteria on the loop. They left single bacteria on these streaks from that loop. Right? And those, that single bacteria became colonies. So you went from a mixed culture containing these two, one's yellow, one isn't yellow, and now you've generated a pure culture. So if I took my loop and just took the bacteria from that colony, it would be a pure culture of just that bacteria. And that's the purpose of doing the street plate. I, I've already talked about that. A spread plate is when you, you don't really streak it so much, you just sort of spread the bacteria out. You know, you add liquid containing the bacteria. You could spread the meat, you know, you could spread the liquid by, you know, moving the plate back and forth. Uh, or using a, what they call it, a, a sterile hockey stick. And then you let the single bacteria grow into colonies. A lawn would mean that you've got bacteria growing over the entire surface. So this isn't, gen this isn't a, a lawn, but if you wanted to generate a lawn of bacteria, this would be one way of doing it. So these are a couple of definitions, right? Media can be selective. If it is, then it contains an inhibitor that prevents certain bacteria from growing, always. It might just be gram-positive bacteria or gram-negative bacteria. Not all media have inhibitors, but if they do, they're selective. Then there's differential media, right? We have 40, 14 different biochemical tests we use in lab to allow us to identify what an unknown bacteria is. Right. So differential media can differentiate between two types of bacteria. So this is an example of one, it's called phenyl red broth. Right. And you're asking, can they ferment a particular carbohydrate? So you have to know what the carbohydrate is. But let's say you put sucrose in here if they didn't ferment the sucrose, it would stay red, like the first tube. If it did ferment sucrose, the tube would become yellow. You'd inoculate it, give it time, the bacteria time to grow. If this tube turned yellow over that time period, then you could answer the question, yes, they can ferment sucrose. You might only you know, there might only be a handful of bacteria that do that, right? And you, you can narrow your search down to just those three or four bacteria. And you might use another test, like say, we put lactose in this instead, and ask, can they ferment lactose? And then those four, maybe only one, ferment lactose. And if that's the case, then you were able to use these two different tests. They were both using the phenyl red broth, so the carbohydrate can change, right? You can use multiple carbohydrates. We use lactose and sucrose in the lab. Uh, and they can also make, generate a gas bubble. Some bacteria do, some bacteria don't. And there's some more, there's blood auger plate, BAP, we'll use, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, there's a mannitol salt auger that uh, can be used. And we use that in lab and we use the McConkey as well. This is just a list of different biochemical tests. And then we use the microscope. We've got some new microscopes now, right? But uh, you'll ex be expected to know the ocular objective lenses, where they are in the mechanical stage. <clears throat> Hopefully you're familiar with that. A compound microscope is a microscope that uses uh, two lenses, an uh, ocular lens and the objective lens. So two lenses. There's four different objective lenses. There's just one ocular lens. You can only use one of the objective lenses at a time, right? You can't use 
And then the oil immersion is one of the four objective lenses, which requires that you use oil, right? If you don't have oil, when you use this lens, you can't see anything. The oil also has to touch the lens, right? You put it on the slide, then you move it, the, uh, le the lens over the oil, and it has to, uh, it has to contact the oil, and it acts as like uh, the oil condenses or forces more light into the lens. I think that's the, the theory behind that. There's uh, what's called simple stains, where you just have one color. When we use the uh, Ram stain in lab, you generate two different colors. That's referred to as a differential stain because you have differentiate between two different types of bacteria. And then the capsule stain would be considered a special stain. We'll talk about that in lab. That's a, this is a pretty quick uh, section. PowerPoint.